Welcome to all of you. We're so glad you're here. Seema, kick things off for us. Well, Kelly, this program is a potential loss for U.S. companies, not to mention our economy. Research from Still shows highly skilled immigrants on the H-1B visa program contribute nearly $77 billion to U.S. businesses every year. And advocates say H-1B visa workers play a critical role in fulfilling jobs that native-born Americans simply can't, specifically in science and technology and fields like artificial intelligence, where a new study shows immigrants have founded or co-founded nearly 65 percent of the top AI companies in the U.S. And according to the Economic Institute, top H-1B employers include Meta, Amazon, Tesla, among others. However, due to the recent layoffs, over 85,000 workers in the U.S., H-1B workers, have lost their jobs from 2022 to date, putting great stress, I can tell you, on a lot of immigrant families here who have exactly two months to find that new opportunity or risk getting deported. The backlog of green card approval is also a key factor as well. So Canada providing a very attractive option for many who want to now stay in North America. We spoke to venture capitalist Manan Mehta, who invests in immigrants. He says first choice for highly skilled workers is to come to the U.S. If the U.S. doesn't fulfill that choice, people will look elsewhere. Kelly? Seema, thanks. Let's turn to Benjamin Bergen now. How, again, thank you for joining us today to talk through this impact. How big of an impact do you think this program will have? Yeah, so um, it's already actually had a huge impact. Uh, the government announced this a couple weeks ago. It went live um, two days ago, uh, and it's already full. The 10,000 spots that the government had allocated specifically for H-1B visas wow. uh, has already filled up. So uh, I think that this has met uh, sort of every, like m everyone's expectations and then, more, and then more some. You have to keep in mind in Canada, there's 250,000 positions in the tech sector that are currently not being filled. And so the government really was smart to move quickly on this specific uh, challenge that the U.S. Uh, is facing in terms of some of the large tech companies, because this is really going to try and help fill a bit of that gap here in our own domestic economy for finding highly skilled workers that have really some of the you know, most unique and special talents to build sure. the economy of the future. And also, we should note that the U.S. process, while it's never been great, seems to have gotten even more mired down the last couple of years. There have been concerns about some fraud in the program. There's just been a lot of backlog from COVID and things like that. So Canada's already hit the 10K worker cap. Do you think they would raise that? I mean, if they have to fill 250,000 positions, why not allow 20, 30, 40, 50,000 people? Yeah, so great point. I think, you know, uh, my office has already reached out to uh, Minister Sean Fraser uh, uh, earlier today you know, saying, like, let's try and raise this number. Let's try and get that up. So, look, I think Canadians will be looking at this really carefully, and I think the government will be as well. Um, and I think, you know, one of the things that's also really great about this program is it's 14 weeks, or sorry, 14 days uh, in terms of you getting a, an actual determination on whether you can come. And that will allow you to live and work in Canada for a minimum of three years. It also allows you to bring your family as well. So it is a really generous program to try and help attract and bring the best and brightest to this country. And, you know, remind us, Canada has not always had, or maybe you could say it has, had a friendly kind of, or a friendlier approach to immigration. You know, what's the history here and how big of a deal is this? Or do you think it, it just kind of keeps with a different attitude that Canada has generally taken than the U.S.? Yeah, so Canada has a very different lens on immigration, really, than almost anywhere else in the world. We're an extremely welcoming country. Last year, we actually welcomed a million people, uh, our largest number ever, uh, to Canada. Um, and Canadians view growing uh, our people as a really positive sign. And so, you know, this is really just a doubling down on the government realizing that, you know, uh, immigration is actually a strength um, and immigration that is bringing in highly skilled workers is a strength. You know, Forbes magazine published uh, last year that um, of the top 500 unicorn companies, 80 percent of them have uh, a, a foreign uh, born yes. leader or someone in their senior leadership. And so, you know, bringing in really talented individuals is definitely uh, a tool that Canada has been using to deploy uh, as an economic stimulus.